next speaker is a regular columnist for World Net Daily. Um, he is a minister and an economist, and he has a new book out. Uh, it came out just recently called The Bankruptcy of Our Nation. It's available in all the bookstores. This is not a homemade, you know, where they're at, at home making the book up. This is a real book. This is a real author. This is a real columnist for World Net Daily. And this is a real voice for our time. Welcome with me, if you would, Jerry Robinson. Well, once again, good to see you. Good to see you this morning. Give yourself a hand for being here again to this evening. That's good. That's good. I, uh, I want to thank Jay Blevins. I want to thank the uh, Tulsa Tea Party organizers, Chris Kurtz, and all those who've been involved. Give them a big hand for all they've done to make this a viable, opportunistic event in order for us to reach the city of Tulsa and not just the city of Tulsa all across the all across the United States today people are gathering and congregating in, in similar uh, events just like this because they are angry as, as the former speakers have said enough is enough you know earlier I, I told you I told the uh, crowd earlier that I was dealing with somebody at the last tea party they had asked me when uh, when do you think the bull market is going to be in the stock market and I said I don't know but I do know this, there's going to be a bull market in tax rates if Washington has anything to say about it. And who's excited about that bull market in tax rates? Let me see your hands. How many of you think taxes are going to be higher 20 years from now than they are right now? Washington is on a collision course with a brick wall. They continue to pick our pockets every single year, raising taxes and raising all kinds of money for things that they really don't need. As I said this morning, the Congress needs a new motto, no tax left behind. When I was sitting down and I was waiting my turn, I, I noticed there was a sign over here that uh, really spoke to me. And I want you to hold up your sign here, M Mrs. And, and I don't know your name, I'm sorry, sweetheart. But it's in turn, uh, oh, I, I can see it. Some are calling me a right wing nut. No, I am a broken hearted mother. Washington is stealing the American dream from my children. Now, that's exactly... That is exactly the sentiment that I sense in this place today. I sense that there is a, there is a, a, enough is enough with the complacency. If I'm right, the people that are here have come here because they care about their children and they care about their grandchildren. And they're worried about the debt that is mounting and awaiting them whenever they grow up. If I'm right, you are afraid rightfully that the freedoms that you have are under attack by those who have been entrusted to govern us you know that liberty is not negotiable you know that you cannot help the poor by taxing the rich right you also believe that uh, government has never been the solution but instead it's always been the problem we don't need more government that's not, that's not what we need at all. In fact, the, the current government is exactly what our founding fathers had tried to prevent. They tried to prevent us digging a hole this large. Now, we have an $11 trillion debt that is increased is increasing by the, the, the billions on a rapid pace. Let me give you an example of how quickly the national debt is rising. Imagine that I were to take somebody in this place and I were to give you a dollar. And I was going to give you a dollar every single second for the rest of your life. Who wants that deal? One dollar every second for the rest. For, that's better than the lottery, man. A dollar a second forever until you die. And if you lived 20 years, you would have accumulated $600, and, uh, $600 million. That's a lot of money. Our government spends that much every 13 hours on the interest on the national debt. On the interest on the national debt. And who receives the interest on the national debt? China. Our founding fathers knew that America needed a sound money supply, not a fiat dollar like we have. Yet the Federal Reserve and Ben Bernanke, which is a private 
banking system continues to devalue the dollar through massive printing. It's becoming increasingly worthless. It's backed up by absolutely nothing. Bad monetary policies have been combined with bad fiscal policies, and they have placed America on a dangerous collision course. The ruling elite even now are moving us now to a global currency. In fact, the, the new article that I'm writing on World Net Daily is going to be about this global currency that is being proposed. Guys, we're moving in a very dangerous way, and this is exactly why you're here. America is in deep, deep trouble. We all need to ask ourselves why the Federal Reserve is printing money like it is. We need to ask ourselves why Obama is, is spending as much money as he is. We need to ask ourselves why Timothy Geithner at the Treasury Department is bailing out everything in sight. We have an inflation trifecta that is coming around us. The more money we print, the higher the inflation is going to go. And then inflation is going to attack everything that you've worked so hard to build. Just like Weimar Republic. Just like, like all these other uh, nations that we've seen hit hyperinflation. We are on a, track, uh, on a crash course with hyperinflation. This is exactly where our government policies are leading us. We need to end the Federal Reserve. And we need to take back the privilege of printing our own currency. It's not even constitutional for the Federal Reserve to even exist. There's not even a place in the Constitution that gives a right to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is a private banking system. Our founders disallowed central banking to take over. In fact, Jackson killed the bank and then also slayed the national debt, the only president that ever rid us of a national debt. We need to return to those days, my friends. We need to end the Federal Reserve. Our founding fathers also knew that you can't spend your way out of debt. That's exactly what Washington has decided to do. We've mounted up massive debts, and we've accomplished it by providing cheap money through the Federal Reserve. And now what is Obama's plan? And what is Bernanke's plan? And what is Geithner's plan? More cheap money and more debt. Do you think it's going to fix it? No! Got Harding! This economic crisis was created by bad fiscal and monetary policies. And these, these bad government policies have flooded our economy with cheap money. When Obama came into office, he promised change. You remember? Change that you can believe in. Well, he certainly helped change in some ways. I think our national debt recently changed from $10 trillion to $11 trillion. Is that good change? No. Debt is the problem. Debt is the problem that we have in this nation. Our kids and our grandkids are being, are, a tremendous burden is being placed upon them. I often equate it with this. Imagine walking into the finest steak restaurant in this, in this town, placing an order for the finest steak, getting this, the nice side of mashed potatoes, some asparagus, the finest bottle of wine, a cheesecake drizzled with strawberries, and then the maitre d' brings you the bill and you say, I don't really want to pay for that. Put that on my unborn grandchild's bill. Yeah. Boom. <coughs> That's immoral. And that is exactly where America has found itself. Guys, it's, it's moments like this when we can actually have clarity and we can begin to realize that our country is going in the wrong direction. Good for you for coming out. Give yourselves a hand for being here today. Thank you to Jay Blevins and all who have organized this. I encourage you to go out and get a copy of our book. We're doing a national book tour now called Bankruptcy of Our Nation. We actually even get into some of the spiritual deception that's behind this. How many of you know that there's spiritual deception also occurring as we speak? This book gets into that. I want to throw this out. Whoever wants it can grab it. I'm just going to toss it, okay? Throw your hands in the air. Let me see. Hope it didn't hit anybody. Also, I want to invite you to come down and visit us. Every Friday night, we are, we are opening people's eyes, challenging believers to think and thinkers to believe at the Veritas Theology Forum. You may have seen this when you drive by 36 in Yale. We meet at the Tulsa Junior League building every Friday night at 7 p.m. We encourage you to come. Free food, live music, and it only lasts an hour, and it's a discussion about the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the days we're living in. My pleasure. Thank you, Jay, for having me, and God bless you.